I don't know how many of you know this about me, but I'm not a technical person. I'm not a developer. I'm more of a functional person. So it really interests me anytime that I find something where the power platform and Dynamics 365 can work together to replace what we would normally have to do in a develop with a developer. And those, those kind of things really interested me. And that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. Hey, I'm Scott, and this is the Dynamics Post. And each week I bring to you a new video on Dynamics 365 or some piece of Dynamics 365 functionality. And this week what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at how we can create basically an API where a third-party system can uh, send a post request to a URL, and through Power Automate, we can return that request with some information from the system, basically creating a, an instant integration between the two systems, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. We'll take a look at how we can create this flow. Let's start building our flow. So I'm in the Power Apps, make.powerapps.com. I'm in the flow section. We're gonna create a, an instant cloud flow. I'll, uh, I'll add a name later, so I'll skip that for now. Now the crux of this whole flow is going to be the request, uh, the HTTP request. So I'm gonna start typing in request and we click on the request there. And then this is the one we're gonna use when an HTTP request is received. And then, so what this is gonna do, when we save this, this is gonna generate a URL for us. And when we ping that URL, it's gonna return some data based on what we, what we, how we create our flow. So along with that URL, we're gonna send it some information. We're gonna use a vendor today and we're gonna query on a vendor. So we wanna send the vendor and the company. And to do that, we're gonna create some JSON here. And JSON is fairly simple to create. So I'm gonna put it, start with some curly brackets. And one of the things we're gonna send is vendor. And then we're gonna put a colon after that. And then we're gonna put the, we're basically in this step, just putting the data that we would, we're thinking we're gonna send. So I'm just gonna put US 104 there. And then we're going to put the company and the company is going to be USMF from using Contoso data. And when we hit done, it's going to generate our JSON for us here in the file. Then the other thing we want to do here is the met is to assign the method and we're going to use a post method. So we'll go ahead and sign that. And then we're going to go ahead and create a new step. All right. So that's going to take care of our request step and we'll see in a minute. It's going to generate a URL for us and, um, and, and we'll see that in a minute. So the next step we want to do is we're going to use a Dataverse connector. I've got the vendors uh, V2 uh, from Dynamics 365 hooked up as a virtual entity. So what we're going to do, we're going to use the Dataverse connector list rows. And when we use virtual entities, those are all going to have MSERP in them. So I'm going to choose, I did a search for that, and there's my vendors V2 MSERP. And we want to filter these records. Okay, so what we're gonna do is here in the filter rows, we need to do an O data style query. And you kinda have to know your fields. I've gone ahead and looked them up ahead of time, but uh, you can go into the Dataverse and look up your fields. So the first one I wanted to do is company, and that one's gonna be MSERP underscore data area ID. And then using O data, you put an EQ for equal, and then a single quote. And we're gonna go ahead and put in this company. This is coming from this, this uh, previous step here. So this is one of the variables. It's going to be company, and then we want to do also an and, and then the other variable we're going to do is MSERP underscore uh, vendor account number. And that's going to equal in a single quote, and that's going to be our vendor. Like that, and then we're going to end that in a single quote. All right, and then we can save that. So that list rows is going to, because of our... Um, the variables that we're using, it's always going to return one uh, one record, but this is, just think of this, is going to return a, an array of variables or an array of values, right? Not variables, but values. So what we need to do is we, next we need to deal with that array. So I'm going to go ahead and do a new step and I'm going to create a variable, initialize variable. And I'm just going to call this one vendor array, underscore array and the type is going to be array. I'm not gonna put any value in it for right now. So we're gonna put save that there, okay? So then the next step we're going to do, we're going to deal with that array. So, so again, this could be an array of values. We know it's not going to be, but basically what's gonna happen next is it's gonna loop through uh, the list that we're generating in the list rows section and add that to our array. So we're gonna look for an append to array variable. So append to array variable, there's that one. 
and our, we're going to pick our vendor array variable that we created in the first step. And then the value we're going to put here is going to be the body value item there. That's the one we want to use. And that's going to cause uh, Power Automate to actually flip this around for us. So it's going to apply this each value. It's going to add that body item value to the, to the array. Okay. So I know that's a little, little weird because it's, um, because it's, uh, you know, we're only going to have one value, but this, that's the only way I could find to do it. If anybody knows of a different way, please comment, let me know. On this next step, what we've done so far, we, you know, we, when this HTTP request is received, um, we're going to get, get the rows based on this, um, based on these values here. And then we're going to initialize an array. And then we're going to basically populate the arrays from, from the values we got up here. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to parse the JSON that comes out of that. So what we need to do first is go ahead and run this. And what we're going to do, um, let me pull up Postman. And I'm going to, going, to, going to start a new tab here in Postman. And so we want the post URL. And so let's go back to our right here and then we, we're going to go ahead and if we expand this out we'll notice now that since we've saved this we've got a URL we can use so I'm going to copy that URL and then I'm going to go back to my postman so I've got a post and then I'm going to put uh, paste that URL in there and then if we go to the body remember we have to send some JSON over so we're going to go ahead and put raw here and this is going to be JSON and what we need to do is put our JSON in here so we're going to put and we're basically going to type in the same thing we did earlier so vendor um, and then this colon and then the, we're going to do the us uh, 104 oh, to me and then we're going to do a comma and then we're going to do company and the colon and then this is going to be usmf all right and so since we've saved our 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 flow we just want to make sure that your flow our flow is active So we want to make sure our flow is active. So it, you know, we, we haven't deactivated, so that we should be fine here. And then what we're going to do, we're, we just want to trigger that flow so that we can get, we're going to have this run and so it gets down to the step, to the last step so we can tell what JSON looks like. So we're going to go ahead and hit send. We should get just a send. We're not sending a, uh, anything back yet. So we're not going to get anything back here in our Postman request, but let's go back now and take a look at our, um, go back and, back out of this for a second go back to our list rows and then we should see a succeeded step so what we want to do here is we're going to go into this where it's appending this array variable and we want to grab this this is JSON here so we're going to copy this all the way down we're just going to do a control C now we can go back and edit and we can do our next step so the next step we're going to do is we're going to actually parse that JSON so let's go ahead and do a new step and we're going to type uh, parse, parse JSON, and then we're going to generate from sample, and then we're going to paste what we copied in there, and we're going to hit done, and then that's going to generate our JSON schema. So the content from this one is a little different too. So remember, this is an array of values. I mean, I know technically we've only got one value, but this is still going to be considered array. So really all we want from this array is the first value. Okay, so we're going to use a little formula for this. So we're going to do uh, first is going to be we just which is going to give us the first record, and then we want the dynamic content. We want the the, the array there. So what this is telling us is it's going to give us the first value, first array value there. So we're going to say okay to that one. All right. So now we've we've parsed that uh, JSON. You know, we, we're going to get the first record. We're going to parse it out. Now, the reason why we're doing this, we could just um, send the entire JSON that's return, being returned from the uh, from from this list row. We could return all of the different data points in there, but let's just say we only want a few data points, and that's why I'm kind of doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, and let's go ahead and do the next step, which is where we're going to um, just pick out a few of the fields from the record to send back. All right, so let's go ahead and do new step, and what we're going to use for this is we're going to go ahead and create another variable. So we're going to go do initialize variable. And this one we'll call uh, vendor, uh, we'll just call it vendor JSON there. All right. And the type on this one is going to be object because we're going to compose some JSON to send back. And here's the value. So we're going to type in um, 
I'm going to just enter some JSON here. So we're going to we're going to return back the vendor account number. Uh, and that's where we're doing our colon and then our value here. And then the the data that we want to send back is vendor account number. And so this is our MSRP. So that's from our um, from our list rows up here. After we parse the, after we parse it through the JSON, and we're going to put double quote there, comma, and then hit enter. And the next value we'll send back is the vendor name, colon, and then double quote. And this is going to be the vendor name is actually called um, address description. That's where the vendor name is. So we're going to go ahead and put that there. Comma, and then the last one we'll do is a vendor. Uh, uh, let's do vendor street. Okay, it's colon, double quote, and then this is going to be uh, address street. I think, yeah, address street is what we want. Go and double quote there, and then we're going to finish that off with a uh, curly bracket. Okay, so we're going to save that. And now the final final step we need to add here, we're going to do new step, and then we're going to go back to our response. There we go, or sorry, our request. I said response to request. And then we're going to add a response action. 200 means it's going to go okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And then the body that we're going to send back is going to be our, uh, our JSON variable. So we're going to do our vendor JSON. And then we'll go ahead and save that. All right. So we'll go ahead and let this save. So that's been saved. So now what we should be able to do is let's go back to Postman. So we've got the same URL. We've got the same body. We're sending this US 104 USMF. We'll go ahead and hit send. And there it's going to send back our information. So we can come up here and we can change, the, change what we're sending, US 105, and hit send and we'll get that as well. If you're interested in any of these easy integrations that I've been doing over the past couple of weeks, I've created a playlist on post it over here in the, in the video here for you to take a look at. If you wanna take a look at that playlist and, and see the different integrations that you can do yourself without any sort of developer, okay? So check that out. Until next time, I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.